Hello again, Robin. Hey, Lucas. Hi. Hi. I uh, well, we I, I've um, so far uh, recorded three videos uh, with you. They were all uh, not only interesting to me, but they were also well uh, received and uh, well viewed on on YouTube. So uh, I think that's very uh, very positive. And uh, yes, I. Um, the last time we talked about uh, the dark side of tango, so we talked about an aspect of, uh, yeah, um, w young women, particularly young women or new women, being unprepared for uh, some of the yeah, stranger male behavior you see in in tango uh, with uh, women and girls who are beginners. Um, so I think that was a very uh, interesting uh, video uh, to raise some awareness as well. Um, and, um, we also discussed one more, more topic that would be interesting for a video. So that's what, what's, that's what we're going to do today, uh, is another, um, aspect of tango. That's perhaps not, not, not like as popular to talk about as some of the more like, uh, positive things or whatever the latest fashion is or, 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 uh, the music, uh, but, but I think it's, it's still important to talk about it anyway. So. Can you uh, please present uh, today's topic uh, in your own uh, words? So Lucas has asked me to talk about ages in, the, in tango. And I would, just like whenever he asked me to talk about the dark side of tango, it's like, I am not necessarily qualified to do this. I do not see myself as qualified to talk about this stuff. I'm not a sociologist. There's no data that I've collected, I just have my own personal experience. And I seem to be the someone who's stupid enough to actually talk about it in public. <laughs> well, that's brave at least. But can, can you maybe just repeat in uh, like 10, 20 seconds, like uh, what your experience is with tango? Like well, your, your, tango, yeah. I've been teaching for 20, I've been dancing for 25 years. I've been teaching for 20, two years. I teach at universities, but I also teach in New York City. I kind of specialize in getting new people into tango. I teach um, a very social form of tango. I don't really teach, um, I don't think of myself as teaching a particular style. I think, I think I teach a very generic style and then let people go whichever way they want in tango. Um, I teach people to not bump into, I try to teach people not to bump into each other and to look after their partners. And you're also an organizer. I also be, I also been organizing various malongas and practicas for a very, very long time. Yeah. So you may not be a sociologist. Um, but at least uh, you're quite experienced with tango. So maybe that gives you some uh, credit. It's been my whole life for, for 25 years. So. Okay. Yes. Living, breathing it. Uh, haven't had another, uh, it's might be my only job. Everybody I know dances tango. I'm a bit, maybe my life is too much dominated by tango. Sounds familiar. Um, but anyway, uh, whether you're the most... Uh, um, qualified you qualified person or not you're at least uh willing to speak out about something so uh yeah let's see what you have to uh yeah. well first to I, want, I want to talk about my personal experience first um i th i started tango when i was about 35 so it's an interesting time to start because i was kind of like not particularly young but not particularly old i was kind of in the middle um, but I think I, I remember that whenever I started tango in New York city, there were like 10 people who were under 40 mm -hmm. and we thought we were the young people and we were, we were the, we were the young ones. And way back then, I, well, as soon as I decided I wanted to start teaching tango, I was like, I'm going to create a, a, a young tango scene in New York City. That was my ambition. And the unfortunate thing is that I succeeded. And because back then, of course, the young people danced with the old people. 
because they didn't have any choice. And anybody who'd been dancing for 20 years will remember a time when everybody danced with everybody. And what happened, of course, naturally what happened is that as soon as there was an actual younger scene, then the younger people wanted to dance with young people. And so the it's funny to talk about ageism in tango as though it's not everywhere because obviously ageism is everywhere in our in our society and um but nobody would say if somebody went to a if some older person went to a uh techno club like a rave nobody would say oh how horrible nobody danced with you they would say what were you doing at a rave if you're 70 years old or whatever but people do get um outraged that younger people don't want to dance with people who are much 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 older than them uh in milongas and i guess one thing i wanted to say is that not that ageism is bad or or good or unusual it's just like of course it exists and it's just natural that it exists um and it's funny for me because i think that for a long time i had this kind of like i felt that i had this cloak of invisibility that like people couldn't see that i was older because i was a teacher and uh, a dj and an organizer and so i got somehow somehow had this pass um and i knew all the young people and got to dance with them but like if i go to buenos aires and i go to amalonga then i'm just this short older white guy sitting in a malonga and they and i don't get dances i don't I definitely don't get dances in the younger places um even though you look much younger than you actually are i, I do but i'm so i'm 58 now I'm yes much, i couldn't believe that when you first yeah. told me but uh, yeah, i look much younger than i am inside i don't feel as much so young <laughs> everything's falling apart now uh but um yeah i saw i see that i see that i see the ages and go so many different ways like i see so of course the classic example is like i will see uh, older women come into the malongas and when they walk in i will know uh, i will worry for them because i think i don't know if they're going to get dances because my malonga is a little, got a little bit younger scene and i might dance with them but doesn't seem to really help necessarily um and also sometimes they are sometimes they're good dancers sometimes they're not good dancers i've also seen uh guys who i know who are good dancers come to my malonga and not get dances because people just assume that they're not good dancers oh that was the other thing that i wanted to mention is that there was a time whenever a lot of the older guys were good and there was never an assumption that because somebody was older that they weren't good but now there actually does seem to be that kind of assumption i think that a lot of the women a lot of the followers are used to the from their experience is that a lot of the younger guys are better dancers hmm. and it's different in different places if you go to buenos aires i'm sure that you'll find older guys who are much much better but i think that the, that the standards of teaching have has risen 
So some of the people who learned 20 years ago, yes, they have 20 years of experience, but 20 years ago, they learned stuff that wasn't very comfortable. And, and they've never really worked on themselves since then. You know, that might be, okay, but that is, that is, that, so they might actually still take classes. So that's the other thing I was going to get to. So when I finally realized what a mistake I've made and that I was creating this, this new group, this new tango scene, which was, and I knew that, I was, and I was, you know, I, I, I saw people who I cared about being alienated, you know, older people who I had been in a scene with them and they were friends with me and they didn't want to go to my Malaga because they didn't, they weren't going, they weren't going to feel happy there. And I understood it and I was sad about it. That's when I said to myself, okay, I'm going to start teaching older people and I'm going to teach them well. And then we're going to have this whole group of older people who dance better. And then we're going to get rid of that prejudice. And it was very frustrating because they learn slower. And that's just a fact. Yes. Young people learn fast. And that's super satisfying and seductive for me as a teacher. And and well, people, they they they're just as capable of learning. They just take more time. And it's frustrating for them too. And sometimes they will go to another teacher who might teach them things that they feel as though they're learning. And I think that they are maybe going faster or learning better because they're maybe they're paying more. I don't know, but, uh, but they're not really um, not learning the things that they need to learn in order to be comfortable. That's that's the biggest problem. Yeah. That's what that's a, that's the main thing that 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 the younger that I hear the younger the the younger followers complaining about because they feel as though they are pushed around and not listened to uh by some of the older dancers older 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 leaders yeah like physical ability we don't we don't we often talk about learning tango as you know uh, if you learn good technique uh, you learn musicality and you learn connection and we don't talk so much about athletic ability and i say athletic ability i don't mean that you're able to do a high jump or run uh, a five minute mile or something but that your balance and flexibility and core strengths core strength is huge uh and the strength of your legs and those things are actually really make a difference and when you hold somebody in your arms and their balance is not as good it's not as comfortable and so some people will take a lot of classes but they don't look after their bodies and they might actually be better off spending that money going to the gym <laughs> uh because yes, we don't we 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 like again we don't need to. Uh, just because just because we are in the later part of our life, does not mean that we can't be strong. And as healthy as we can be. So not about body shape, uh, but it can be about how, and it's not about how you look on the outside, but it might be how you feel on the inside in terms of you need to be able to support yourself. 
Yes. So I'm not really offering solutions. Like I was able to say, how do we, like you we were asking about the dark side of tango. It's like, what do I do in the Malanga to counter that? It's like, I don't know what to, what to say to counter the fact that ageism exists, except to accept that it's obviously there. And um, and as I'll tell you something else, like about it's not always, not even always such a bad thing. It's like at at Yale when before the pandemic, there were a lot of older people in the class. They were like members of the community nearby, and they were nice people. And they came to class every week, and they really helped to keep the community alive. Uh, but the classes were not, the classes had been really big and they were not that big anymore. And the, it was actually a problem. There were very few students in the Yale University Tango Club. And sometimes they even had problems getting rooms because uh, there were actually very few university students there. And uh, and then after the, during the pandemic, well, after the pandemic, the the university was much more careful about who they let onto campus campus and they said can't have any uh any non-students in the clubs and so the clubs were became only students and the club grew so much and it grew i don't know 300 percent and now it's all these young people it's like a little army they don't even need to like go to New York City because there's enough people in the club to have their own malongas. And this next weekend, they're actually having their own festival. And they have a, you know, students coming from a few other universities, but there's enough kids in the club to have their own little festival. Um, so if you, that, there's an example that Tango really grew when the young people didn't have to dance with older people. Yeah, you said that in the other video that um, like yeah. something like, like uh, are we really surprised that people, young people want to dance with young people? That's what you said yeah. in the previous video. And it's just, it's, it's absolutely normal. Yeah, that's what you said as well. It's normal, yeah. Because it's a, so they go they they go to dinner with their friends who are their same age and they do all the they date people the same age and that's just the way things are. But that's essentially also what you said in the beginning of this video, right? That it's it's actually a natural situation to, even though it's unfortunate as well, it's also a natural thing. I'm not sure how you worded that, how you phrased that, but um... and now it's funny you have these uh, encuentros around uh, Europe and the United States where they have their own invitation only secret uh, marathons they're called encuentros but they're just for the older crowd and then they have the marathons which are just for the younger crowd it's it is sad you know it's sad for people who remember whenever everybody danced together um but you just gotta accept it and if tango and it's just it's just a, it's just a fact it's just a uh, something that happens, something that would normally happens whenever a community gets to a certain size. When it gets to a certain size, it's able to to divide into subsets, into subsections. And, and for the same reason, whenever it was really small, they were all dancing together. But so I, sometimes people say to me, well, Robin, um, 
you know, you're teaching at the, you're teaching these young people, but these young people come and go. And it's actually the older people that stick around and create continuity in the, uh, in the community. And I don't think it's actually really true because like at the universities and to an extent in the, in the city, in, the, in New York city as well. Yes, the young people, they may not be around in five years, but they've probably gone somewhere else. Like the, especially the students, they've gone to a different city in the United States or they've gone to Europe. And like, there's people who learned at Yale and Columbia, they're in Japan, they're in Germany, they're in, a lot are in Paris, a lot of them are in, in Silicon Valley. Like they go somewhere else and they might stop dancing for a couple of years and then they start again. And we got them young and they might be dancing for the next 50 years. Um, and the older people, they might be around for five years. And then after five years, they might be too tired to dance, to, to dance tango anymore. They're just, it's not really, uh, it's not really true that, um, that it's, better to invest in the older crowd than the younger crowd because of it, it's going to have more continuity. That has not been, it has not been true for me. It's not been true for my experience. Yes. And like there can also be in, in, in local scenes, there can be young people who just live there and they don't move around. They're not necessarily students uh, who will go to different countries or will go back to their, the countries where they came from or, um, so that's um yeah it's it's a good um thing to to say um so you said you said you don't really suffer from it yourself oh no 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 i used to not suffer from myself i had this i had this magic magic cloak of invisibility or this like this card that uh <laughs> saying i yeah I'm a token young person and uh, I might have it a little bit to an extent because I'm still, I'm, I do look younger than I am. And I know a lot of the young people because I am an organizer and because I was a teacher, I am a teacher and I might've been their teacher and that I DJ uh, at different places around the country. But it's, I can feel it now. I can feel the difference. I can feel that there's a new generation, and uh, and I was around. I was DJing for such a long time, and so successful for a long time, and DJing at so many different places. And now there, now there's more like this mood of we need to have different people. And it doesn't mean that I was bad. I think I was pretty good. People always told me that I was like one of the best ones, but they've heard me many, 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 many times before. And they want to have people who look more like them. So how do you? Is maybe it's too personal, but um, well, for you, I, I think I think we've gotten used to the idea that I say things that I'm not supposed to say. Okay. So how do you how do you deal with with this? Like you're getting older yourself, and I will one day also. Like I'm not I'm not of this age anymore where I'm among like the the youngest crowd or anything. So one day it will happen to all of us if we stay in tango long enough. So how are how are you dealing with this yourself? Like you gave some advice still, in, earlier, I'm, I'm but still, I'm still my time. I, I just my classes are still doing well, and I'm still busy in New York City. I'm just not traveling as much as I was before. I. I what I what I decided to think is that I always wanted to spend more time hiking. Mm. I'm not gonna fly every. I'm not going to fly all over the world DJing. I could go hiking more, or or that, or I could travel somewhere and not dance. Yeah, I could, like travel somewhere and go for a hike. You know, I could go visit friends. I could do lots of things, but I may not have the same role that I did before. You think that has to do with your with your age ultimately, that it's become more difficult, or it is, it is my age. It's not so much. It's not. It's more. That's more to do with the fact that I've been doing this. Yeah, I've been, sure. I've been the the my name has been there for twenty years. Yeah, and now it's time for somebody else's name to be there.
Okay. And purely like dancing wise, um, do you feel like you miss out on something because you're not dancing with the, the youngest people? Uh, or I don't want to dance with people who don't want to dance with me. Yeah, sure. I want to dance with the people who want to dance with me. Yeah. Uh, I actually, I actually am dancing with the youngest people. I mean, if, if I'm de at Columbia University, I'm dancing with people who are 18 and 19. I mean, I'm definitely dancing with the youngest people. Um, but not in Buenos Aires, that's what you said. I'm, I'm definitely not in Buenos Aires. And not, and not when, and it's not, and I don't look like if an 18 year old came into my milonga, that would be not the natural person for me to ask for, for that would not be the natural person for me to want to instantly dance with. Um, I mind dancing with those people. I'm teaching those people, I guess. And I'll, and I, I like to look after my students whenever they come to, to, to the milonga, of course. But, uh, yeah, like people who are a lot, lot younger than me. Not always, but sometimes uh, they're like aliens. You know, they live in a they 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 live in a different world. Yeah, which is natural. Like I've always experienced that with uh, people of my own age. Uh, when I had that age, like I I felt like I was much older, and I didn't really have much to do with them. And uh, I've always been uh, embedded in tango with the older crowd, so to say. Um, mm -hmm. So it's always interesting to hear a totally different perspective like yours. But now that we're all, all, all already talking about so many things we're not supposed to be talking about, um, <laughs> I've always noticed that like for a lot of men in tango, so I don't have that, but for a lot of men in tango, like the ideal thing seems to be to, to dance with an 18 year old girl, um, even if they're not really even that experienced dancing. So there's also a kind of like Darwinistic uh, age uh, ageism thing going on. I think that that is probably a lot to do with how that how the follower makes the leader feel, or how the that a lot of ever. Oh, and I think that's a, that's the same for a lot of guys. It's like you, like a lot of leaders want to dance with beginners because they want to be the person who led that beginner to do their first baleo or their first uh experience their first cicada or something they want to they they want to think that they're such a good leader that they can lead these girls to do things that never they've never done before and that they're the first one and then the, and and the girl and then the girl will go the girl will go you're leading me to do things that I don't know how to do. And that is crack. That is, <laughs> that is what uh, I might be talking for myself, but I think a lot of guys like that, you know, this idea that you can lead somebody that, that, to get that feedback. But yeah, that's uh, it comes to it's a little bit different whenever you, you see somebody dancing with somebody. You see it's, uh, like a guy who's much older than somebody dancing with somebody. And then you see them sit down and talk to them. And uh, uh, monopolize them. That's whenever I get, I get involved. Because yes. I, I want to know that that's not going somewhere dark yes so i really recommend people to check out the other video we, we did about that uh, topic um maybe one more question like is there anything you can add uh, um, like the, the men versus women type of ageism thing do you think women suffer from it more than than older men for example older women do they suffer more from it than older men or is it not really uh, that much of a difference I think that women suffer for it more than men and they're less surprised and men suffer from it less but they're very surprised and outraged 
Mm-hmm. Um, and you said something very smart. You said, and these guys, have they been working on their tango? You know, they learned 20 years ago, but have they been working on their tango for 20 years? And I think the answer usually is 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 no or that they've been taking classes with people who are not really helping them. Yeah, I think they don't take, uh, probably don't take private lessons, uh, maybe. And also, if they go to a pratica, they're not respectful to the younger, followers they could ask the younger followers how could i be more comfortable and i don't think that they do i think that and i, I actually remember now i'm remembering teaching at princeton university and i remember there was a lot of older people in the class and i remember that i would i would always have a teaching teaching partner who is much younger than me and Sometimes I had to tell the guys something for them to believe it be, or to, for them to listen because they would not listen to my, uh, to my female younger partner who actually might have known more about than I did, you know, more time than I did. I always work with people who ne don't necessarily have, have not necessarily been teaching as long as I have, but who have definitely have physical abilities much more than me. They're definitely better dancers. Um, but that is something that I wanted to mention is like, not that long ago, I was, uh, it's about how, how ages, ageism can go both ways, ageism, sexism. Uh, not that long ago, I had a friend who wanted to perform in my malanga but we didn't like the person who she was going we didn't like the way the person who she wanted to dance with danced we didn't like we didn't appreciate didn't like the way this other other dancer danced and um so we said no we don't want to have to have you guys perform but we'd love to have you perform but not with this person and she was really really mad at me but not my partner. I mean, my partner is this young woman. And she couldn't believe that actually it was my partner and I making this decision together because I'm older and male and I've been in this longer. She couldn't believe that actually it was a joint decision and my partner and I make decisions together. Oh, this is so amazing. Like both these these anecdotes are amazing because they show how this all these this ageism and sexism thing can get so messy in both ways really interesting yeah it shows how complicated this all is like we can talk about it but uh, there's so many factors uh, at play here because sometimes someone may feel excluded because like women i think women particularly sometimes they may feel excluded because they're older and then they look at the younger woman uh, uh, dancing uh, instead and they get yell jealous or they blame it on, on, on their older age, but maybe they're just not as good dancers as they think they are. And with men, it's the same. Like there's so many leaders I see where I feel like there's so much, much lost potential in them. And of course I never tell them, but it's just, it's just, just a thought like, um, people could be dancing so much better or, or and, um, yeah, you can have all these ideas in your head why people don't want to dance with you and maybe in some cases it is indeed because of ageism but there could also be other reasons um that you don't even realize uh like it's a, it's a bit of a victim mentality thing right like of course it's really I mean, frustrating yeah, but yeah you're you're absolutely right that uh there could be other reasons and it could absolutely be right that these older women are not as good dancers, but we're not going to pretend that ageism doesn't exist. We're not going to pretend that the guys might want to dance with the younger women because they're more attracted to them or something like that. Uh, but uh, but if people 
are comfortable to dance with and have good social skills, then they will get dances at any age. But nobody, but you can't buy entitlement to dances. Yeah. Like you can't, it doesn't, just because you, well, you can take a lot of lessons and you can take a lot of lessons with really famous teachers, the most expensive teachers. And you can move to Buenos Aires, but it uh, it doesn't make you comfortable. You know, it could, like if the teachers are good, teachers could be famous and good, and the teachers could be famous, but not make you comfortable to dance with socially. Yeah, so you mean like you, you may be able to influence some things, but other factors, not so much, like your age. Yeah, yeah. And the the opposite of that is, you know, somebody could be a beginner and 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 young and beautiful or or beautiful and older or or just young, and there will be guys who will want to dance with her, even yeah. though she's not good and she's a beginner, and not even necessarily that attractive, just young. That there's that. That we're not going to pretend that that doesn't exist. Sure. And is it, is it, is it sad? Maybe. But it we can't be surprised. Yeah. Well, I think that's a that's a really good conclusion for uh, what you talked about today. And uh, I hope it uh, helps people uh, gain some new insights in how some of these hidden factors in the tango world uh, actually work. Um, now we'll see how much trouble I get in. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's funny. Uh, like, uh, like I saw a really critical comment of your of your last uh, video about uh, about these men, and I'm like, yeah, that this person got really triggered by. Uh, and uh you know but you you can't satisfy uh, everyone and uh it's like um it's like with boxing like if you if you can't uh, take a a jab you cannot actually yeah. like it's... <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah i guess that's just the way it is um but um no i think it's a really solid uh a, sol a really solid topic uh like a really solid explanation and uh i don't even think it's 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 that controversial as you as you think but it's it's um like what you said today but it's is it's it's good to to like if i if it gets some discussion going i'm always shine light on it good to, shine, good to shine light on it yeah sure sure so uh thank you for uh, today's video and uh hope to speak to you some other time okay. thanks lucas